When Richard Nixon and I were taping the Nixon interviews, there was a news report that President Jimmy Carter, the then president, was about to give a televised fireside speech to the nation. When Nixon heard about it, he immediately approved. That's right, he said to me. That's what matters these days, the tube. It's the tube. Richard Nixon always had a complicated relationship with the tube. In 1952, his televised Chequers speech kept him on the vice presidential ticket. In 1960, his first televised debate with John Kennedy was widely believed to have damaged his campaign for president. But it was not as simple as that. Though opinion polls show that Kennedy was voted the winner by television viewers, Nixon had been voted the winner by radio listeners. In 1968, his cameo appearance on the hit TV comedy Laughing appeared to help his presidential candidacy. Sock it to me. The medium fascinated and bedeviled him. He understood its power to humanize and glamorize political leaders. But despite that fascination, he never appeared to master the crucial art of seeming to be himself on television. That may be why he frequently mused about taking behind the scenes control of a television network or otherwise blunting the ever-growing power of the tube. Nixon's the one, Mr. Regular, a guy you can trust. Oh, he's a charmer with a face you can love. And all the pretty girls will tell you that's how come. Nixon's the one, mm -hmm. Nixon's the one. The conversations you're about to see were the words actually spoken by the participants, edited only for time. Nixon meets with Chief of Staff Holderman to discuss his forthcoming official photograph. All these uh, photographers, you know, are all highly sensitive, you know. Each one has a different idea of what the hell makes a good picture. Let's let him do it. Let's uh, let him select the picture and decide whether it's worth a damn. Uh, let him uh, set up, uh, touch it up, you know what I mean? Uh, but you tell him what we need. Uh, what we need primarily is a good smiling shot, you know, not too, too, but, but anything we want. And then uh, one that we can use as a final portrait. And that way we don't get into the situation where you get others in, into the deal. Uh, it's awfully difficult for one photographer, Bob, to say that another man's work is any good. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, I know Ollie's stuff, uh, Ollie's new stuff is best in the world. Better than this guy's, I'm sure. This guy is probably better in portraits. Uh, you can, I can imagine the way he makes you sit there. and uh, He's just watching little things, a lot of little damn things. Uh, like the wrinkles in your suit. Oh, the cufflinks. Well, that's damn important. Yeah, he just uh, he gets uh, all these damn little things he's watching. And uh, uh, whether your head is tilted properly, he's making a decision about that. You know, oh, look, you'd look very nice if you did your head this way. Now. That's yep. another thing. Yep. Uh, I did want to ask you one other thing about, uh, one, about our uh, television producers. <clears throat> Uh, I think Mark Good, uh, for example, is excellent on sets and uh, all that. Uh, you walk in and uh, the crowd is on your right, then he hands you a little chart and uh, so forth and so on. I'm wondering, I wonder, I don't want to do too much of this, uh, but uh, I was wondering if you think he knows anything about uh, uh, how I ought to stand and uh, whether your head ought to be up a little more. And uh, I'm not going to be... Uh, He's not going to get involved in content. I don't want uh, any television person deciding anything about that. But, uh, but uh, <clears throat> you think they know? They do. Uh, they. Uh, I know. I've been reluctant to get into that with you because uh, you know uh, I talked about it with Carruthers. You, know, you didn't want people telling you to wave your hands or fold them. And, uh, well, let, let Carruthers rather than good. He would like to do a little critique on it. I think maybe writing a memo is a better way to do it. Have him write a little memorandum. Because he can do it in the abstract, and then he isn't hung up. No, he, I don't know. He'll give it to you. Him. I'll read it, get it, uh, do it in a very objective way. Uh, no, not with everybody involved, and then you say, you can tell him there's no problem. I think maybe on the other hand. I think on the other hand, Bob, we do not want, uh, we do not want to uh, try to uh, eliminate uh, whatever idiosyncrasies I've got. That's right. Uh, that's part of the man. Uh, 
you don't want to be a cardboard man up there. Carruthers, I think, realizes that. That's right. That's what I'm concerned about. I don't want to be up there like uh, Ronald Reagan or, uh, or or Bob Hope or, or for that matter, Jimmy Durante. <laughs> you know, I've got to go my own way, see? Absolutely, and that's the thing. I'm, not, I'm just not going to worry about it too much. Well, Carruthers feels very strongly. And I, that's why I do not, do not want uh, the, st the staff and all uh, getting into this sort of thing. That's why TV is different than a, than a, it's like an Ollie picture because it's, uh, it, it keeps moving. You don't sit and study it. The portrait, you sit and study. The portrait hangs on someone's wall for five years and they, you know, the more you look at it, the more the flaw comes out and you focus on that. And that's, it's gotta be perfect. The other, perfection would hurt it. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. If there were anything that were bad, I'm sure he would have spoken up on it. I don't think he feels that. I'm sure there are some things he would look over and know that he would suggest. Well, you said he would want to... Uh, uh, makes his own better picture. Uh, a, a few little things, uh, little things that he uh, finds that uh, it's better to look up at the camera or down at the person or it's not good to look sidewise or something. Uh, a few little things like that would not, uh, not uh, I mean, you know what I mean? He said, too, uh, about the, which is exactly what you want, about making you conscious, self-conscious about technique when you should be working, worrying about the substance. He's absolutely right. Absolutely. Substance matters. Because you're doing, if you're comfortable, your delivery is going to be good. You know that. Nixon, Haldeman, and the special counsel Charles Colson review the previous day's press conference. I'll tell you an interesting thing. Uh, what we were talking about before you came in is very interesting. That conference yesterday has prepared for at least 100 questions. Answer 21. My God, most complicated goddamn things. Uh, what are you going to do about the pound? What are you going to do about this, that, and the other? But I'll t uh, the most important thing about a press conference is uh, not how you answer the damn questions. important thing is, it turns out, the question of luck, very often, is uh, whether you happen to get a few questions uh, that provide the opportunity to, uh, you know, to play the field rather than uh, answer it. I, I think that... Um... I think we we're put too much emphasis on content. Oh, yeah. Everybody is interested in content. I, hell, I said to Bob the other day, forget the content, just look good. You, uh, you had Bob and I go back and look at the uh, Kennedy press conferences, and when you, uh, I'll never forget, watching it now in retrospect, you get a much better feel. He never answered the questions. It was the way, the style and the flair and the occasional wit and the gracefulness <sighs> with which we... Uh, which he handled it, and you did that last night, I think better than you've ever done it. I thought there was more style and class in the way in which you did that. And as I told you last night, the cameras played it better than I've ever seen them play it. Uh, it, it well, we have really, nothing to do with that. Well, there's nothing we can do no. about it. Well, it was magnificent. Who plays the cameras, Bob? Is that the network? Whichever one is the producing network. Uh, Who was it well, last night? I assume CBS because it, uh, this is their month. Well, it was, it was spectacular. They caught, did you see coverage done of every question? No, it's on television. They Don't you think never... that camera angle was spectacularly good? That three quarter, uh, Profile of you smiling, you know, it's the best <laughs> campaign photograph. Kept coming back on the screen. But the impression was an extremely pleasant impression. Nixon and Holderman are playing host to evangelist Billy Graham. Hedley Donovan has just invited me to have lunch with all the editors here on March the 7th. And I was quite amazed because it's the first time I've heard from Time News, I mean, Time Magazine since Henry Lustar. You meet with all their editors, you better take your Jewish-English dictionary. <laughs> it's just, you know. <laughs> right. I don't know any of them. Oh, it's become a, it's a, it's a very interesting thing. They're all Jewish. Uh, you can't talk about it publicly. You know Paul Keyes? Yeah. Yeah, he was telling me about his show. He said it's the same true of all the Hollywood shows. 11 out of 12 writers are Jewish. That's right. Now, in the media, Life magazine, totally dominated by Jews. Uh, Newsweek, owned by Jews, uh, totally dominated by them. Uh, and on the editorial pages. New York Times, Washington Post, it's totally Jewish. Now, the other thing is the three networks. Now, uh, except uh, they, they don't have a, a front man, uh, uh, Howard K. Smith, uh, Brinkley, uh, Cronkite, uh, who may uh, not be that persuasion. The writers, 95% of them are Jewish. Now, what does this mean? Does this mean that, 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 that uh, all Jews are bad? No. What it does mean is most Jews are left-wing, way... Uh, the particularly the young ones are like this, way up, radical, peace at any price, uh, except where support of Israel is concerned. The best Jews 
actually, are the Israeli Jews. That's right. Because Israel, and the reason Mrs. Meyer supports me, which she does, uh, Diane does too, for a very fundamental reason. This has nothing to do with, but they understand that Democratic candidates will cater to the domestic Jewish vote. She supports me because she knows that the great danger to Israel is Russia. Uh, she knows that in the crisis involving uh, Lebanon or Jordan, uh, that I will face down the Russians more. She knows I'm the only one who'll do it. Uh, she knows that a Democrat uh, will cater to the communists and the Russians. See, that's my point. She's tough. Uh, we've talked about this. And uh, uh, Rabin is the same way. Oh, yeah. Rabin is a Russian Jew. And boy, does he, <laughs> boy, does he know. <laughs> but in this country, we must be under no illusions. Are you aware of that? We must be aware that in the media, we confront a solid block of people and uh, this has nothing to do with anti-Semitism, but it happens, though, that insofar as the media is concerned, the powerful media... They've got it. They've got it by the And they're putting out all the pornographic sure. stuff and putting out everything. I don't know where they do it. But, but the stranglehold has got to be broken or this country is going to go down the drain. You believe that? Yes, sir. Good boy. I can't say it, but I believe it. No, but if you get elected a second time, we might be able to do something. Let me tell you something. Every Democrat candidate is going to owe his election to the Jewish people. I won't. Never. Uh, now, the point I make is this. The difficulty is not just that they're Jews, but boy, they take care of each other. Uh, now, every group has a tendency to do this. Uh, Catholic will uh, tend to hire Catholics, and the Quaker perhaps will, will wants to, tries to hire uh, Quakers. But the Jews around here, boy, uh, they surround you, and they expect that the guy upstairs is going to bend over backwards and hire Jews. Yeah. Get my point. It's all to help their people. Now, what we have to remember is the media in this country is extremely dangerous. You were talking about the media network and all that, where everybody's working on it. But uh, we get back in. Believe me, we're going to take care of it. There's a way to do it. Can't do it now. If we do it before the election, it'll look political. But believe me, if you don't do it, uh, you're going to have... Do you look at television? Do you see how filthy it is? It's terrible. Especially this last year. I don't look at it. Uh, and the movies are filthy. I don't even go to movies. Yeah, well, they got all the dirty movies on TV now. The way we see movies, old, we see usually the old movies. We brief them first and then show them at Camp David or other places. But I, I don't go to movies. But the point I'm getting at is that the media today, uh, the filth, the anti-Americanism, and the rest, it's the media. The media. No, I've been thinking about it. Nixon and Haldeman take a break from a foreign policy discussion. I saw a little of laughing last night. Pretty bad. I don't uh, know, uh, I don't see how it's doing, but it, it's not doing well because you don't hear anything about it. I don't think it's doing as well as, as uh, it had a little spurt for a while, but I understand it's sort of gone down. Yeah, the ratings have gone down. But there isn't anything good on television, apparently. Is that right? Well, there's just... The choices are so bad, there are apparently no good new shows this season. It's such a horrendous thing that there isn't that much good stuff available. There's still not. Yeah, but there's not much good stuff available. The world doesn't create that much good stuff. I want you to, to keep looking into this business. Of have, have Flanagan give us, give us a, a really cold, dirty assessment of whether the way to destroy the networks is not to uh, let them build a new TV system. I mean, they're so obsessed about this. Uh, I, I, I'm just inclined to think that maybe we're, we're holding off on there for the wrong reason. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe that's one service that uh, we can render. We would destroy them. That'd be great. Uh, we go out there, see what their guys would do. Suppose there's a cable TV. Uh-huh. Uh, now, I would hope that... To... Well, no, I, I mean, after you set the opportunity up for an independent network... Do you? Well, there's no reason why, why there couldn't be a new service organization, one that, uh, you know, packages a news show that the cable TV people could buy. And that may be the chance to get where we keep coming... Agnew is just obsessed. If the only hope here is for us to buy a network, is for us to get some of our money and buy a network. Yeah, Billy Graham and everybody. But there may be another way to do it, which is for us to put together a news-producing organization 
and sell its product to cable television. Yeah. On a midsummer evening, Nixon is about to deliver a historic, nationally televised speech, becoming the first American president to resign. Okay, is it? How's that? <coughs> is that reading light hit hitting anywhere you can see? I don't think it is. I got it. I got it barn door at all. I don't think it is, but it might. Okay. Hey, you're better looking than I am. Why'd you stay here? <laughs> Blondes, they say, photograph better than brunette. Is that true or not? I don't know, sir. Or you, you are blonde, aren't you? No, sir. Redhead? No, thinning. <laughs> We're the same. <laughs> Mr. President, this is Bill Headline. He'll be producing the pool for CBS tonight. He will uh, cue you. Hi, Bill. Yeah, how are you? All right. Yeah. You so, got an uh, extra camera in case the uh, lights go out? Where'd you get that from? Is that uh, an NBC? Uh, this is the camera. This is the primary camera. Yeah. That's the backup camera. Yeah. And uh, that's an a, a NBC camera, I presume. No, that's... Uh, they're both CBS cameras. <laughs> Standard joke. It's, uh... <clears throat> Let's see, uh, to get these adjusted properly, uh, my eyes, uh, you'll find us here, get past 60. That's enough. Thanks. <sighs> Brad Ollie always wants to take a lot of pictures. <laughs> Afraid he'll catch me picking my nose. <laughs> hey, you wouldn't print that, though, would you, Ollie? Ollie. No, sir. Yeah, you would. You just take a long shot right now. That's enough. <clears throat> Yes, I can see this. Oh, you want a level, don't you? Yes, yes. Good evening. This is the 37th time I've spoken to you from this office where so many decisions have been made that shape the history of our nation. Anymore? Each time I've done so to discuss with you some matter that I believe affected the national interests. That's fine. All right, sir. Okay. Holly? Yes, Mr. President. Only the CBS crew now is to be in this room during this. Only the crew. Immediately following the no. broadcast. No, there will be no picture. No, after the broadcast. You've taken your picture. Didn't you take it just now? Yes, sir. Yeah, because uh, that's it. Yeah, because we didn't, uh, we don't want to be, we did, we did, we're not, the press isn't taking one. Said so you're just taking, you just take it right now. This is after the broadcast. You got it? Come on. Just a few more seconds, Mr. President. Okay. Look at the camera, Mr. President. The camera, the TV camera, sir. All right, fine. <laughs> One and done, sir. All right, All right. I'm just okay. going to. I'm not, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna make the other photographers mad by giving you too many now, that's enough. All right, uh, all secret service, any secret service in the room? Just one agent, Mr. President. Out. You don't have to stay, do you? Yes, sir. You required to? Yes, sir. <laughs> I was just kidding. You know, I used to uh, try to get him to leave me alone. <laughs> and, uh, but we usually uh, have uh, more than one. Didn't we used to have more than one? Two minutes and 15 seconds to air, please. Two minutes and 15 seconds to air, sir. Didn't we used to have more than one uh, agent in here? Uh, Not in here, sir, when you speak. What? Not when you speak in here, sir. No. I see. Fine. Uh, but it's uh, better for the crew. I think you'll agree to uh, have... Uh, as few strangers around as possible. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes I, I talk to my show business friends and they, they, they drive some nuts to have the <laughs> VIP people and others visiting the set to drive the crew up the wall. <laughs> One minute and a half. <clears throat> I better get position. Mr. President, I believe they'd like you to move the pages. What? From, they'd, like, they'd like you to move the pages away from the microphone, sir. Well, if I can, I mean, it depends whether I can see. I'll try. You mean move them like this? Yes, Can I help sir. you? Oh, that's fine. <clears throat> Am I, uh... You check my collar and back. Am I uh, straight and back? It's not... Looks fine. Fine. It's not, uh, it's not ruffled up? Looks straight, sir. It's fine. <clears throat> We're on. Ten seconds.
Good evening. This is the 37th time I have spoken to you from this office, where so many decisions have been made that shape the history of this nation. Each time I have done so to discuss with you some matter that I believe affected the national interest. In all the decisions I have made in my public life, I have always tried to do what was best for the nation. Throughout the long and difficult period of Watergate, therefore, I shall resign the presidency, effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. To have served in this office is to have felt a very personal sense of kinship with each and every American. In leaving it, I do so with this prayer. May God's grace be with you in all the days ahead. We're clear. Have a Merry Christmas, fellas. Hi, thanks for watching this video. I made it. Uh, there's more stuff, so be sure to subscribe because we're adding new material all the time, especially while you're sleeping. And click here to watch more videos. Thank you. And thanks, Google.